What's up, everyone? It's Justin Sarachik, the editor of Rapzilla.com, and we are back with another episode of the CHH-ish podcast. And today, I have a special guest, and his name is Legend, and Legend does a lot of amazing things. He is a pastor, a rapper, uh, he's working on a documentary film, he does a lot of stuff surrounding mental health. Um, so we're going to get into all of that stuff today. And uh, it's going to be a dope conversation. I can't wait to have it. So we need to wait for Legend to hop in here. And we're going to have a super dope discussion. Can everybody hear me? Let me know in the comments. Oh, he's here. Let me know in the comments. You can hear me loud and clear. All right, we're going live with Legend right now. I got the request. Let's see. Yo, yeah. I Hello. think I think you set the record for quickest. Somebody joined the live <laughs> after I went live, and, and you were real worried too. I was. I was like, "Yo, I gotta make sure." No, nah, because I was watching Doom with my kids. I didn't want to miss it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's priorities. Priorities, bro. Priorities. We made it right. We ten minutes. We made it. Credits are rolling. So I ran it. Hit. We good. Beautiful. That that's always the best. Always the yeah, best. Bro. Look, look. I got. Come on, bro. I had to, I had to bring it out. I had to bring it out. Merch. She got the vintage merch. The the shirt ain't, ain't looking too good for me at this point. It's 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 worn out. Yeah. PJ mine, shirt. Mine but, ain't, but, yeah, mine's a PJ or a gym joint. Now nah, it ain't even working out. <laughs> I gotta put you on though. I got the fresh guy that's iconic. Ooh. So I gotta shoot you one. Ooh. I got to shoot you one. Okay, okay. All right, so for everybody tuning in right now, my name is Justin. I'm the editor of Rapzilla. This is the CHH-ish podcast, episode eight. It's where we talk about people within the CHH community or talk with people in the CHH community, kind of things not pertaining to music, yeah. but we talk a little bit about music because we have to, and I make up the rules. And in front of me <laughs> is my man, Legend, who is a hip hop artist, a pastor, a speaker, a father, a husband, uh, a filmmaker. Yeah, right. A, That'd be safe to a, say. A budding, a budding. A budding. <laughs> aren't aren't a lot of us. Um, podcaster. What else do I got on this list? A founder. Uh, but you're you're just somebody who's who's looking to make a difference in the community. So, I mean, there's your introduction. What what else am I missing? You got it. What did I miss? Bro, I'm good. Child, child of God, I'm chilling. We're good. Okay. Man. I guess the, all, that, all that's beautiful. I guess the hard part would have been like, all right, now order it in in terms of importance or skill set. <laughs> so we won't do that. Um, Husband, all right. father goes at the top. So I guess I mean I just gave you an introduction, but I guess for the general people watching, how would you sum up who you are um, as a person and an artist? Yeah, man. Uh, so it's it's legend because my name is Nigel. So legend is my name backwards. It just says God turned my life around. So that's what I'm about. I'm just about sharing uh, the gospel through music, message, and media the best way I can, infiltrating culture. And I'm big on, like you said, big on family, big on forgiveness, big on values. And, and so I just really try to push that in any way I can. But I'm big on also, um, my, my coach helped me say, you're, big, you're trying to reach the de-church and unchurch, but not to the exclusion of the church. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it, man. I just, I love, I love music. I love hip hop. I love speaking. I love, I love crowds and working with crowds of people. Uh, yeah, man, that's just what I've been about. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about that, you know, as someone who your whole kind of your whole vibe and everything you're about is about helping people recover and people heal and overcome. And you do that through your music, you do that through speaking and, and different things that you do. Why do you think you're wired that way? Like, what made you say, like, this is what I want to do with my time to help people? Man, you know, uh, it's, it's really my, my story with my father, man. Like, my, my dad was absent. Drugs, alcohol, man, he wasn't around. Uh, he was, I'm in Virginia Beach. That's where I live. He was in D.C. three hours away. And I didn't see him from 5 to 20. Uh, so right. that, that, gape, that, that, that gaping hole of, like, why am I not important enough for him to come down the street and get me? And then trying to fill that hole with everything that 
pop culture and rappers and friends were telling me to fill it with. Um, and just knowing that knowing what doesn't work, you know what I mean? And knowing the pain that brings and trying to put on the face and being fake and but you gotta keep the face up to act like you're not hurting and all that stuff, man. I've been I've been there. My dad called me one time, one of the few calls I had when I was like twelve and he said, uh, hey, I'm coming to pick you up on this day. I bought this type of car, pack your bags and wait by the door, I'll be there. And I just waited all day and just then just when you get rejected like that, it just it breaks your heart, man. So um that's that's where my heart comes from is like i know what that feels like and i don't care if if you're in middle school going through it now or if you 30 something with kids and you never got healed and you don't know what to do because now you got them like my heart is for the healing of people through what christ has done for mm -hmm. us and being able to communicate that in every way that i can um and to, to back to the father story depending on where you want to go after this the reason why i believe forgiveness is a big piece of it is because at 20 i did get to meet my dad um, he came down, we met, and he asked for forgiveness. And at the time, I wasn't in Christ. And I was like, oh, this is my chance to hurt you back. So I had zero interest in reconciling with him. I told him I'd never forgive him for what he did. You know what I mean? And I yeah. sent him back to D.C., like, hurting, and I was proud of it, proud of it. Um, six months later, a lady walks into my insurance office, and she says, you know, I don't know what's going on, um, but God told me that to, I'm not here to buy insurance. God told me to tell you. If you don't get that bitterness out of your heart, you'll never make it into the kingdom of heaven. With that. Wow. I'm just like, that was, that was, that was rude. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> well, nice to meet you too. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Do you want to buy a policy? Can I at least get my bills paid out there? And uh, three months after that, I did call him though. And I called him, we had a convo and I was like, look, man, I forgive you. I love you. Let's figure this out. And, uh, and, 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 and it was a really beautiful conversation where I felt the chains fall off of him and I felt them fall off of me. I didn't even know they were there. And we were planning on, we'll talk again. We'll, we'll figure some time to get, get together, but we good, you know? Um, and so I had that forgiveness conversation with him. Yeah. Uh, but right after that phone call, he passed away and we never talked to him. So, wow. you know, it's, it's, I got this big message of hurry up and forgive because you don't know how much time you have. No, that's um, good. Yeah. And so that's that's where that's what everything comes from. And do you do you, do you have siblings too? Mm, I'm only oh, child. An only child. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. do you do you think this experience with your father has made you a better father? Because 100%. you've kind of seen exactly everything that you don't want to do. Right. Percent, bro. I've seen all the. I've seen everything I don't want to be. But if you're not careful, so so yes, in a healthy sense, absolutely. It's like I know what it's. I don't want to take any of this for granted. Like. Um, so yes, much better father because of that. But also, um, if you're not careful, you can lead out of fear and insecurity that you can still become that because that's what you're running from if you're not careful. Um, and that's, that's where a lot of the days I parented poorly, I think I've been running from something. Even though I was doing a good job, I couldn't see it, I couldn't celebrate it. And I put pressure on myself and on my kids and on my wife. That really comes from the scars I had. And so it's, it's while pain can push you to be a better person, it's got to still be submitted to Christ and, and let him heal the wound and not run from the wound. Yeah. Cause if so, you're just going to be running from something that's still bleeding. Um, and so I'm getting better. I'm healing every day. I'm going to counseling. All that's good. God's been doing the work on me, but I still walk with a limp from that pain. Uh, but I think I'm a pretty, pretty good freaking dad and, and husband. I think I'm killing it right now. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> I think it, I think it's also kind of not fair to you in your mind because every time you mess up, we all mess up. As, as parents and as people, yeah. right? But every time you mess up specifically, you say, oh, dang, I'm being like my dad, you know, or yeah. something like that. And that's not, that's not really a fair assessment because you're not allowing yourself to make mistakes like a normal person because you're gauging it against what your past is. Right, right. You're right about that, man. And my, my homeboy told me, he's about five years ahead of me on the parenting journey. He was like, if I can give you one thing, bro, just don't try to be the perfect dad. And I remember I was just like, man, I, I'm about to kill this, man. I don't want to hear all that. <laughs> and then I called him like five minutes later, like, man, my bad, bro. You was dead, right? I didn't want to hear what you had to say. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, what, what my wife and I did early on, because we both come from broken backgrounds, you know what I'm saying, with, with, with family, was we, we went and got some older friends, like 25, 30 years down the road from us. And like, yo, y'all still together. Your kids still love you. Y'all still go on vacation together. What did y'all do 20, 30 years ago that we need to do now? So 30 years from now, we look like y'all. And that was a big thing for us was getting like old friends who did it. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't know what it looked like for real, you know? Is, so. is there like...
like a, a Facebook group, like looking for old friends. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just what happened. If it's anywhere, it's definitely on Facebook. It ain't on Instagram. Yeah, it's so like, I don't know. <laughs> hi, this, this is an old parents uh, Facebook group. We're looking to help right. bring new parents uh, right. into the, to what they're supposed to be doing. Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, so one of the things, and I want to congratulate you, you're recently ordained as a pastor. Uh, that that happened. That, that's that happening this. That's happening this. Okay, week. that's, that's yeah. We're we're gonna preemptively thank you. So prophetically, I mean, thank you. congratulate you. <laughs> I guess thank you also. Yeah. Um, so you had told me, you know, you for many years you kind of resisted this title of pastor, but really mm. it's kind of been your your calling all along. So yeah, right. why why now and and what is going to change for you after, if anything? Mm. Man, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to change that. Honest with you, I just I'm really I'm literally doing it for two reasons. Um, and it's not even anything I'm really going to like announce. Like I ain't even going to say nothing about it. You probably not going to see a post. Um, and even at the church I serve in, we're just going to kind of keep it in the tuck because for me, it's it's more about when I'm in certain spaces where ordination matters. I'll bring it up then. You know what I mean? Okay. And and I also uh, and this is my limited view. God may have way more in store, yeah. but if, if I really, uh, I am very interested in being available when I'm needed specifically for funerals. Um, and I don't know why, but I have a really, I have a really soft spot for sending people off. And, and, and theologically, they're already not, they're gone, they're not there. It's just honoring them. But yeah. the family that's left behind serving them well, uh, particularly when it's a rough situation that they, that they left in, uh, I just want to be available when I'm needed in those situations where relationally somebody knows Hey man, legend, legend actually could really help our family out this time. Um, I just want to be available for that from an official perspective, and that's really the only reason I'm doing it. To be dead honest, so with you. It, uh, God, it's, God may have more in store, but I don't know what it is. So it's like that job that wants you to have a college degree, even though you've got 20 years of experience on the job. <laughs> but it's great, like I graduated really high school, so they can't, you know, they can't give right. me the job. That's a really okay. good analogy, bro. That's okay, 100 it, man. Yeah, okay. now I just. It was always open to me, man, but I just never took it. Like, even in my church, I, I, I helped lead my church. Um, I preach in my church once a month. been doing that for 10 years. I help with vision and cash and stuff. But, like, I just never even took an elder title at my church um, because of just the, the way they do the elder role in my church. I'm on the road so much and gone so much. I didn't want to serve poorly or be absent or not meet expectations. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to serve people poorly, uh, even if it's visibly and they don't understand what's happening. Um, so I just kind of, you know, tucked away from it for that reason. Okay. So. Okay. I got you. That makes sense. All right. So my, I feel like this is kind of old news already, but just for, for people watching who are going to be watching after, I feel like our first interactions together, I think were for the safe house project was yeah. that back in 2018 already. Or was Bro, it further that, that, that was, yeah, that was a, that was probably in the 16 top of 17 when we connected okay. on that. Yeah. Cause it was summer 16 when the seed was planted. Okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I was still new in my Rapzilla journey back then. So nice. uh, I know, I know, like, kind of now you're more like a board member. You're not really there doing the day to day stuff. But right. could you maybe for everybody watching, just ge give a brief run through of what that started as? Because what it started as was something totally different from what it became yeah. now. And yeah. I've, and like I said, I've been there kind of since the beginning, talking to you and watching you and seeing it evolve. Yeah, man. So. We went to Africa in 2016 to work at an orphan care center and do some racial reconciliation work uh, in the country. And and I, I that was when I, we were leaving this orphan care center. And I was like, man, this place is beautiful. All these kids are getting all this help. I talked to Dr. Marsh and Dr. Jenny, like, well, what, what's next? What do y'all need? And she's like, well, we really need a safe house for our girls as they develop. And I was like, well, what's a safe house? And she was basically began to explain to me the horrors of trafficking there is no real 911 to call in their community yeah. and uh, all that stuff. And I just, and I'm sitting here like, you know, hanging out with, you know, the girls at a grade school, two years old in the mind. And I'm like, so you mean I could come back here and she could be snatched and gone and I'll never see you again. And she was like, yeah. And, and so when I got back to the States, I was, I fell into a little bit of a depression. I came out of it and I told my church, I was like, look, I don't know what we got to do, but we got to help them get the safe house up. And, and I'm going to make an album. And all I need is anybody to hear is it to send me a check. And we're gonna make sure we get the house up. And yeah. so um, that's how it started. And and while we were in the process of getting the house up, we doing five K races. I'm doing free concerts and whatever. Um, when we were close to it, my friend Christy, who had been by my side the whole time, she was like, "Cause she's the one that emailed you the, the press kit. That's how we got connected." 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Christy says, well, what do we do to, um, uh, to, to do, to replicate this in the States once we get the house up there? And I was like, I don't know. And so we formed a separate organization, Safe House Project, uh, to combat human trafficking here in the States as well, and to always fund our two initial houses in, in, in uh, South Africa. And it spread across the states like wildfire, man. Just like we've been, we've been adding beds to homes that already existed, like making sure that certain homes that were there uh, got the got the right regulation to make sure they're operating right. We've been like, on Capitol Hill lobbying for legislation and federal regulation for yeah. safe houses. We've been training uh, cities and police departments and and military. This is how you spot and fight and end trafficking. Talking to American Airlines, the Patriot, like a lot. It's been going crazy. We've added over 600 beds in the national landscape, and we. We've seen women survive, we've seen women get out, we've got them in rehab, we help them. And now we got a lot of survivors on staff who are informing our care to make sure we reach people effectively. And it's just been insane to watch it blow up from just, I wanna make a rap album and help one house happen. I, did, I just never saw it coming, bro. I never saw it coming. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it, it's funny because as I was getting the emails about things, it was like, you know, at first it was kind of a struggle just to fund that one house, right? right? I remember taking a lot longer and you didn't quite raise all the funds. Right. Then all of a sudden we got that one house and it was like, oh, we're going to do another house. And then we're going to do another one. Oh, now we're bringing it to the U.S. Now we're doing this. Now we have the on watch program, which it, is yeah. a church program. And then now it's like so big. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even there anymore. You know, <laughs> I'm, not. I'm just letting these, you know, other people run the ship and do incredible things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Christy and Brittany are superheroes, man. They're ninjas. Like they, they yeah. had tons of connections just through family. They got indoors. I would have never gotten into. And uh, when I had to leave, it was really hard because it felt like I was giving my baby away. Right. Um, but it was just like, you know, I'm still plugged in. I'm not, I'm not on the board anymore. I stepped off the board. Oh. Too. I'm on the, yeah. I'm on the website as a founder. Like I go speak at the galas and you know, if they need me, I pull up and they call me, but like, um it's it's there's an open door for me to slide back in whenever i want to or whatever but like it, it's they i i came into this thing like oh my eyes are open to this new thing i didn't know about christy had been went on a mission trip when she was 16 and it had been a burden passion in her heart for like 20 some years that this is what she was supposed to give her life to yeah so then when i stood up and said i want to do this thing she jumped out like i'm supposed to be here what, what you want me to do and uh and she took it and and god just blessed it and it's just been really cool to watch what her and Brittany have done yeah yeah amazing yeah. like i said I, I i watched it from the beginning and i can't believe it's the same thing that it started as it's um, totally yeah. different <laughs> yeah and, and what happened I, I know it was you it was another artist named sinai right yeah, yeah. one yeah. other artist focus yeah focus so are do the other two still make music you had like a label the renaissance music group I did. Music group, something yeah, like that I did. We, we disbanded that around the end of 2018. Okay. That was my call. Just like I, I was pulling in so many different directions, yeah. like safe house and fundraising for this and booking gigs and managing stuff that we just, I was like, look, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my stuff great or I'm going to do us okay. And I got to pick, you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, sent them off well. We still bros to this day. They're not making music as much. Focus actually is pastor in a church that he grew from like, I don't know, 30 people to 300 in one year, like that's killing it right now. Uh, and, and Jermaine's off in other endeavors. Sinai's off in other endeavors as well. He's doing a lot of battle rap with the, the Overflow Rap League or whatever. He's doing stuff there. Okay. okay. Um, so, yeah, so bros is still doing stuff, man, but I just, I kept I kept trucking ahead with kind of what I was doing and, you know, they're doing well as good as well. So when you when you kind of set that aside, that's when you feel like you, you really leveled up on everything else you were doing, right? Because yeah. I, I, re I remember your music, like just you as an artist now, like that, that change and i mean it is a long time 2018 if you think about it yeah. but also at the same time not that long but i feel like your growth since then as an artist is like huge thank you bro um, i appreciate that really do for I, sure for sure I, it's, it's definitely the case man i've grown a, a ton bro and and uh like i said man i've always loved having a crew of people around and like i said they still i was up in dc a week and a half ago for my daughter's volleyball tournament. I, first thing I did, focus where you at, let's pull up. And we were trying to link and the schedules didn't work, but like, they, they that's still fam. But um, yeah, my being able to just focus on what I was doing definitely helped me to level up as far as that's what I had to do. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm growing a ton just in my skill set, in my business acumen, in my relationships, in funneling resources. Yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been it's been a level up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now let's talk about your next endeavor out of that was really focusing on mental health 
and what it's like 20 20 ish right yeah. is when you started doing the the virtual concerts and you did god is iconic and good enough and i feel like those were pretty like untapped creative things to come out of our space like nobody i think a few people may have done virtual things or whatever but they didn't do it like you did it thank you bro. um and bro <laughs> and i know will thomas right was was the man behind the camera Every kind of making the time. stuff happen the time. Yeah. um so where did where did that idea come from and again you you went from you know the trafficking stuff and now you went completely to like mental health at that at that time period yeah no doubt I mean, well, in, in 2020, when everything was going crazy, I actually entered counseling myself to finally deal with my daddy issues. There was some stuff going on with me. So I entered counseling like, I don't know, three, four weeks before the whole world shut down. Mm -hmm. And right after my first counseling appointment, my grandmother passed and my mentor passed. So I really just locked in with counseling and said, I can't travel anyway. Let me lock in and then go home and just heal. And so that, it became a big part of my life that whole season. So when it was like, man, maybe we should do some sort of virtual concert or something. I just didn't want to put a phone up and just rap in my living room and Instagram. There's nothing wrong with that. But like, for me, I was like, if I want to do it, do it. See if we can do it at a high level because I can't do an actual show. Yeah. So I called some bros up and Will, Will quarterback from Atlanta, you know, the whole God is iconic piece and he edited it. But my bro Dusty really, and, and Zach really took the role here in Virginia Beach. And I just wanted to see if we could do it. And where God is Iconic came from was like, one, this is my test subject, but two, the idea was at 2020, everybody was fighting everybody on race and politics and theology and all the things. And, I, and this thought just came to me one day, like, yo, everybody's fighting for your attention, but only God is Iconic. And I was like, oh, let's call, call it God is Iconic. I don't know. I mean, you know, yeah. and we did it. And then what, what I did is I made the concert free, but I put hoodies up like, hey, show's free, you know, live, live, um, live, you know, stream on YouTube, shows free, just buy a hoodie if you can. And the hoodies went nuts, bro. Like, I, I never sold out of anything that fast. And people really resonated with the message, and I guess ain't nobody have anywhere to go, so they bought some hoodies. And um, and it went really good. And that's when I was like, cool, let's, let's do this all 2021, and hopefully we'll get out of COVID next year. So every quarter in 2021, we did another one, but that time I called it good enough. And that's when I started focusing on mental health, because I was like, you're good enough for, for God to die for you, not morally, not to earn your salvation, but while we were yet sinners, he died for you, thought you were worth it on your worst day. So trust him and it's okay to go get some counseling because he thinks you're worth everything. Um, and so that was the whole point of that. I was trying to give, I was trying to show people mental health's okay to, to, to address. And so we, we took those were paid and we took some money yeah. and we, 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 we covered some people's bills that didn't have insurance to go get it because getting counsel is expensive especially if you ain't got insurance and i was like if you ain't got it man hit us up hit this link and we'll see if we can cover it for you and we did our best and then and then we had um uh, i brought my actual counselor on stage uh, in the middle of the concert and we just had an unscripted counseling session so when like i'm tearing up on stage like i wasn't acting and so i had men calling yeah. me like bro that's what counseling is like i didn't know i didn't know you could do that i didn't know you know could i do that could, can, and, and i really had conversations with dudes like can men get counseling? I'm like, yeah, bro. I'm like, you want me to hook you up? And so it was really, it was real blessing, man, just to do that. So we did one every quarter, high level movies, type editing, production, graphics, all of that. And then the, by the time we got the good enough four at the end of the year, it was actually a live show with a full venue. I think it's like 300 people came out and it was like, we back out here. And then we just kind of, from that point, didn't keep going um, because, you know, thanks, thanks for changing. So that was the message. Yeah, no, I, I remember that was amazing, especially the climate going on. And you know what's funny? We we talk often, but that was the actually the, the last time that we did an interview was in 2020 when I was doing the community during chaos uh, Instagram. Right. Wow, I forgot about that. So so that was that was like the last time we we spoke like on a recording <laughs> just like this. Got you. My son, Jojo, he was standing over there like, I, I want to see what's happening. He's supposed to be Hello? in bed, right? now but you know we're gonna give him some grace because we you know are you all right all right go sleep go sleep it's 9 24. i'm on i'm on thing i love you my my uh my son's out cold on the couch okay. <laughs> right. so he, he fell it's one of those where he fell asleep too early and you're like oh no now he's gonna be up at like 5 a.m that's how it goes how it goes um all right so let's talk about 
the legendary documentary. What do you, what do you got going on there? Let, let the people know. Yeah, man. So Will and I, it, and it's good transition because it was because of Good Enough. Will was like, yo, let's make a documentary about Good Enough Mental Health, how we did it, da, da, da. Yeah. And we just started interviewing people at the fourth one when folks were showing up. And then as, we, as the stories were getting told, we were like, yo, let's, um, this is more more than that like we need to tell the whole story about forgiving your dad and how that happened and what it turned into and blah 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 so we just started interviewing like a ton of people and and we were like yo this is a full scale documentary film like this ain't nothing to just throw up on youtube like we got to really do this do this yeah and so um we we got we really we really ran and got to working with it um and then we were like look man let's let's shoot for the let's shoot for the moon land amongst the stars like can we get major distribution for this joint so I went out to LA for a couple things and met some folks and shook some hands and got some relationships. And we started running on like, can we really get this out there? So the plan and the hope, we're about to finish the final edit. Nice. Of it. People have been praying and giving. And when that final edit's done, we're gonna actually go through like the scoring and the spotting stage, which I didn't know was a thing. I'm learning what that means. Uh, and then we got some relationships that are gonna try to kick it to some major distributors. And hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have the right handshake. Uh, and it's gonna be either a full length film, like a 90 minute joint, or it's going to be like an episodic kind of thing that you see those interviews. We're, we're, we're figuring out the best move, but we've got some people that are in that world that can kind of guide us. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's just, it's my story. It's, I forgave my dad, Christ turned my life around. And then look at all this stuff, you know, good enough and, and uh, racial reconciliation and, and fighting against mm -hmm. sex trafficking. So we're going to tell, we're going to hit those social issues, but just say the gospel addresses these things. You know what I mean? So um that's the point man and, and then again do it in a way like i said to reach the d church and the unchurch but not to the exclusion of the church so yeah yeah and i know i know like whether it's a movie or episodes that kind of all depends on what platform you land on right and what they're looking for and you know what their audience likes so it could go it could go a number of, of different ways i'm sure yeah um we're going to try to edit it both ways just so we're prepared for whatever right. handshake comes but uh, I'm excited to see you in it, bro, because I ain't even seen your interview, but I know you in it. Well, I didn't, so. I didn't, I didn't see it either, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> I, 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 I did it, but that's, that's, that's all I saw. That, that was the end, yeah. That, that was almost, I think, two years ago now. I, I think it was a year ago, but we had a little about a five. year plus. Yeah, we had about a five-month hiatus, man. So it's been, yeah. it feels like a long, because we were full steam ahead. And then, you know, just some, some personal things happened in yeah. the summer, and, and it just yeah. kind of stopped everything, so. We're picking the ball up now and and all of those relationships are still intact by the grace of god so we're running again so hopefully in the in the next month we'll have the first edit done and ready to rock yeah and i know like for people watching you know you'll hear people say oh i have a movie coming oh, or making a movie and they're like yeah you've been saying that for like five years I mean, that, <laughs> right? that's that's how long this thing takes yeah especially when you're not getting you know bankrolled by a hollywood studio and you're you know, you're just regular people just trying to make something done. Yeah, um, yeah, we found so, it all ourselves. And then a lot of people just gave to it like, hey, I hope this works because I'm just giving my time. And I'm like, bro, I love you. Appreciate you. Because I'm big, I'm big on if you work with me, man, like you work your dollar. Like, I don't, you know, you know me. I don't, I don't try to ask, but you know me. But like, yeah. I'm, I'm big on like working with work to hire. So when people are just like, hey, don't even worry about it. I got you. I'm just like, man, I didn't ask for that. So thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really cool seeing it all come together. Yeah, absolutely. 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 All right, so I guess we could talk about music now. Your project, <laughs> God is Iconic, ish, which God is Iconic, ish. No, C H H. -ish. Oh, oh, I was like, I was like, I, I, I guess if you say so. All right, God. God, God's kind of, yeah, you know, he's a little yeah, more maybe. He's okay. He's we, right. we went with the biggest word we could come up with. Uh, all right, so God is Iconic just dropped. Um, yeah. I told you when I was here at some of your music, it's like, it's music for, for grown up people. Um, nice. And for, for like a, adults and that are just doing kind of what your whole mission has been doing, right? Trying to heal, trying to get over something, people trying to be uplifted. Yeah. So yeah. I guess if you want to break down the messaging of your project and, and overall the goal of what you're trying to, to tell people and have people experience with the music. Yeah, man. So when we did the live show in 2020, the message was everybody's fighting for your attention, but only God is iconic. He's only icon you should be listening to. And that's still, that's still the message. That's still the basis. It still resonates with people, especially now that we're in another political year that's going really stupid. But, um, I, you know, it's, 
it's funny because I, I guess I sum it up this way. I had the, I had the project done fall last year uh, and I was ready to go. And then I went out to Nashville and Derek Miner and I linked up. We was like, let's go to the studio, went to the studio. He made a beat and um, I told him I like cinematic stuff. So he started crafting something. And then when he wrote, like uh, when he, I started writing while he was making it and something totally different came out from like a, yo, I'm going through this really difficult time. I'm, I feel like I'm drowning underwater. I need God to deliver me. Yeah. Like it all kind of poured out. And I was like, where is this coming from? I just wrote to, to the track, right? And, and right after that, and I, we just finished the track and I went home and I didn't think about it again. But right after that, man, I hit a wall and I really crashed. Like I physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, like the end of last year was really hard for me all the way up into this year to where I had to unplug from everything, man. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to do music. I didn't want to go, I didn't want to see people. I just needed, and I just, and it, it was almost burnout, not all the way, but with a lot of depletion from other areas in life, yeah. and I didn't see it coming. And then when I kind of got my head back above water, I revisited the track, and I was like, yo, I was writing from where my soul was, and I didn't even realize it. Um, so I was like, yo, I, I need to put this on the on the, the, at the, the intro to the song. I need to add this to the EP. Yeah. And then, and then there was another track that I had made for like sync that's like really anthemic and really victorious. So I put that right after it. One was like, I'm sinking down. The other one was like, keep going high. That's why the second track on the record is keep going yeah. high. And then it kind of coasts with the third song higher and then it takes a tone. So the message now is like, no matter what you're going through, if you're in a good season of life, if you're in a bad season of life, if you feel like God's with you, if you don't know where he is, if you're struggling, like everything about the, the project is God is iconic over all your hills and valleys, bro. If it's in a good situation, man, praise him. If you're down in the valley low, lift your hands up and say, God, I know you got me. You're going to deliver me. It's going to be fine. You're still iconic no matter what I'm going through. So it's even more personal than it was when I wrote it in 2020, when I said it in 2020. And that's why I put the project out now. So. Now that that hills and valley that you just said is is kind of reminiscent of what you just said, right? When you wrote a song originally, you were in one season and then a little yeah. bit of time yeah. passed and you found yourself in another season and it completely changed the perspective of, of you know, completely. the song. It yeah. went from that to the beginning, right? And and I, I think I think that is pretty crazy that people can write a song, and even just a couple of months later, I'm not in that place anymore. You can't even relate to that your it's own totally song. Different song, bro. Totally different song. I, I'm reading. Um, I don't got it with me. I'm reading uh, Rick Rubin's The Creative Act book and it's a phenomenal book oh yeah i got yours on deck too bro like this is this is this is in the this is in the queue i got you bro if you don't got my bro justin book man go ahead and pick this on up you know what i mean so <laughs> like i got you in the queue um but i'm going through rick rubin's joint the creative act and he said that today he was like when you make a song it's basically a journal entry for your life at the time so if you don't get it out in time, you're going to be putting out something that's no longer where you are. It's just a, it's a memory and not a mirror is basically what he was saying. And it was a really, really crazy point. Like when you put this, put this joint out now, it is, is where you are at the moment. So, um, yeah. So when I put when that song is like, I wrote it, it was literally where I was about to go to. And I remember finishing it up when I was feeling like crap. I was like, I need to finish this up while I'm in the space and record it and, and go ahead and sign it up for the DSPs. Just because when this comes out, I need I need people to hear why I'm at. So if they're there too, we can connect. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and you mentioned Derek Miner, and I remember speaking to Derek, and everyone's been waiting for him to drop his fourth part of his series, The Trap. Um, <laughs> and he wound up he wound up you know losing those songs. Like something happened. Mm. So it, it's been years, and I'm asking him like, why don't you just remake it? And he goes, I can't. I'm I'm a totally different person. The person right. who wrote those tracks and wrote that album is a totally different person. Facts. And I can't relate to those songs. They don't reflect me and I don't even wanna I don't even wanna go there anymore. Yeah. Um so music is, is so crazy like that. Dynamic, um, dynamic bro. It's, it's, it moves with the with the musician and the art moves with the artist and you yeah. just gotta give people grace to grow. I mean it's Classic line, but Jay, right? You want you want the old Jay, but listen to my old albums kind of thing, right? So this it is what it is. Yeah. I think that's awesome though, because that that shows growth. And a lot of mm -hmm. times, you know, for, for us when we see something that's nostalgic, we want to keep revisiting that. Yeah. But if you our entire lives as nostalgic, if we keep acting like we did when we were in high school or when we were just figuring out life, 
you're never actually going to progress anywhere in life or grow because I'm, I'm 35, but if I'm still acting like I'm 17, not, not, not much good is going to, is going right. to um, for what I'm trying to accomplish in life. Absolutely, um, man. And I think that's, I think that's the unfair pressure people put on artists sometimes and the artists put on themselves. Yeah. It's like, yo, you made this album 10 years ago that I really resonate with. Why are you not that person anymore? Like, because I've grown in 10 years and I've changed in 10 years. Now, whether that change is good or bad or whatever, you can, you can debate that and argue that. But like, that's who I was then. And this is who I am now. Like, don't hold me to that. Um, and, and, you know, if hopefully you see a progression and a growth, like you were saying earlier about like what you've seen in me, um, hopefully you see like that, but whoever this person is 10 years later, it's going to be different. And that's cool. Like you just got to respect that. And if you don't like the art anymore, stop listening, you know? So it is what it is. You got the old projects on streaming. It lives, it lives <laughs> or you can actually buy, buy a CD and support the artist and uh, let it live forever. You physical media. Could, you could. You could. Or hit their cash app. That ten dollars still won't help. <laughs> that that will. All right. So what's what's next for you? I know the the project just dropped, but what's next for you creatively, ministry wise, life? Like if you could sum up, I guess what your the plans for the rest of twenty twenty four look like. Yeah, man. I was just solidifying another single today because I'm gonna drop something else in like four or five weeks, man, just to keep the algorithm love happening. So um, you know. So I've got a lot of lot of records in the tuck, and um, I'm working on a lot of sync stuff. I'm trying to get some sync placements. Been learning that world. Been working with Diraj. Uh, if you're interested in sync music, man, take you know link with Diraj and take his IMXL class. It's, it's, it's cheat codes. So, I've heard that a lot. Um, heard yeah, that man, he's, he's just giving it all away, man. I, I watch I watched him. We've been friends since 2016. I've been watching him transition. I'm really proud of bro, man. I really am. So I'm um, just learning a lot and taking my steps there. So I'm working on that stuff. Working on the movie. Um, and, uh, and collabing with a lot of people and doing a lot of songwriting in the background. And, uh, you know, I'm still preaching my church. I'm still booking like uh, Sundays and sermon series and I'm doing some summer camps this year. So still working, still grinding. And um, yeah, say, same old same in one sense, but I'm a little more focused about what I want to do creatively and artistically because I do this full time. I'm doing this full time for 10 years, like raising my own support um, and, uh, and just, you know, booking stuff and feeding my family. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. Um, so it's really been, it's really been all, I got to tie a lot of pieces together to make this work. It's not just, I get booked by a bunch of churches, like it's a bunch of things. So, um, but, so I would write a lot of music, but that would be like a really small percentage of all the other things I had to do, um, fundraising wise and speaking wise and performance wise to keep things going. I, I'm, I'm working on scaling things back so I can do just a lot more writing and recording. Uh, so I have more sync opportunities, so I can work with more artists, so I can keep the algorithm going. So there's a lot more content coming out. Uh, there's not just sitting in Dropbox that I'm looking to get out and keep it moving, like because I'm reading Rick Rubin's book. So <laughs> it's a lot of that, man. So a lot of that. It's a lot of the same, but a little more focused. Yeah, and and now you also you have you're gonna have the the degree uh, to your name too, so you can yeah. <laughs> so you can you can push that up on the resume yeah. right up to the top. Yeah. Um, go on a resume. I mean, so, so, I mean, any anything else? Anything else you got to let the people know? You wanna you wanna drop some plugs? You wanna tell the people where to listen to music? This is this is your chance. Yeah, man. Um, uh, I would so all the plugs. Legend TV. Remember, it's Nigel backwards L E G I N TV on all socials. Uh, Legend TV website if you need business stuff. Uh, it's not Legend. It's not E-N-D and it's not Legion. There's no O in there. And we're not, we're not, we are many. That's not happening. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, <laughs> just, just legend, Nigel Backlund. So yeah, follow me there, man. If, I would say this, man, if you could let, if you could listen to God is Iconic and you like the, and you like the album and the, and the EP and it helps you, if you want to make a response video, I'm collecting those because I'm going to start posting them up. I would love to hear what you think in video form and I can share it with the world because I really want people to hear it, man. That stories of overcoming like sexual abuse from somebody I used to minister to that I found out she had been through that. And I, and I didn't, I didn't know what to say to her at the time. And the song is, I wish I knew what to say to you. Kind of like, I wish the next person that meets you tells you what it is. And I'm hearing that that's giving people freedom. Like people are like, man, somebody, somebody's speaking to my pain right now. So like, I really want to make sure, yeah, man, I really want to make sure that people hear this uh, for the sole purpose of getting healing and hope in Christ. So please share it, check it out. Um, the only other thing I would say, man, is is for like the budding artist or creative out there, man, um, or or you know, the the seasoned artist or creative, whatever it is, 
is I I I want to I want to make sure something that I still wrestle with to this day. Uh, I want to speak against like this comparison piece that we all struggle with. Uh, I want to make sure, man, that you are uh, whoever you are, that you're very secure in what God has told you to do, the lane that you're supposed to carve. And and whether you believe God is speaking to you directly or you're looking at his word and seeing things, the thing that's burning in your heart, the passion that you're supposed to speak to, whether it be an issue, a theological thing, a topic, man, stay firm on that. As long as you're in the boundaries of the word and you stay right in those guardrails, do the thing God has told you to do and don't compare yourself to somebody else with how they do it or the numbers they have. Uh, take wisdom, get mentorship, learn things to do it better for sure. But from a, my value is not as much if I don't do this. Uh, don't do that to yourself, man. That's not what God thinks. And and I, I want I want to see artists free to create in the kingdom the way the king has designed them to without comparing ourselves against human metrics. So that's what I hope for, for artists and creators. And even if you're not an artist, if you just if I don't care if you're an accountant, like do that the way God told you to do it. But just make you know, make just make sure that God is um, make sure you're doing what God wired you to do well and not what he wired somebody else to do. And that's that's what I'm hoping for for you and for me. That's good, man. That's good. Thank you. Th thank you, uh, Pastor Nigel, <laughs> you for, <laughs> for leaving us <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, I got one one more week before I can say that uh, for leaving us off on a word. All right, so for everybody who's tuned in, or if you're tuning in now, or if you're watching this later, this entire interview is going to be on Instagram right now. As soon as I log off, I'm going to cut it up into clips. This interview will live on forever. God is iconic, legend, my man, CHH podcast. Um, man, I I'll talk to you later. I can't wait to see what's next. Hey, t hey, text me like your size so I can send you a joint, man. Like, I want you to get one of these hoodies, bro. All right, and then I'll, I'll, as soon as I get it, I'll have to wear it in my next episode. Yeah, man. <laughs> no doubt. All right, bro. Lincoln, all right, bro. Appreciate Peace. you, man. Man, I'll talk to you later. Good, dog.